Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, Friday, same the time for the center again. And today we're very fortunate to have uh, Dr. Philip Mafuta. And he's a, a postdoc fellow at the Department of Mathematics and Applied Mathematics at the University of Free State. And he work, he's an expert in graph theory. And the title of the talk is on the leaf number of a graph. So it's a great pleasure to welcome you. And please uh, start your talk. And then the talk is for 45 minutes and there'll be question time after. Thank you, please comment. Well, thank you so much. Uh, the title is on the leaf number. You can think also of it as the connected domination number of a graph because they are well linked as I shall show. Yes, just an outline of the presentation. I will start by giving definitions and notation. Then in the second section, we present bounds on the leaf number based on minimum degree and order. These imply upper bounds on the connected domination of a graph. So in the third section, we also talk of bounds on the connected domination number and leaf number in terms of radius and minimum degree. Then we finally show how these bounds are important in establishing sufficient conditions for a graph to be either Hamiltonian or traceable. Here we are to consider only simple undirected connected graphs. Here we go. A graph G is necessarily a set of vertices and edges. This can be cities linked by roads. So the cities will be vertices and the roads will be edges connecting the cities. It can be bonding of chemicals. It can be people in sexual relationships. It's so all that the order of the cardinality of the vertex set of G is what we note by N. So it's defined generally from a walk. We shall denote a cycle of order n by cn, which shall also denote a path of order n by pn. Generally, a loop is a, an edge that joins a vertex to itself. And we say a graph has multiple edges if there exists a pair of edges that have at least two edges, a pair of vertices that have at least two edges joining them. So, here we are considering graphs that neither have multiple edges nor loops. So those are simple graphs. A graph is connected if it exists an xy path from x to y for all x and y element of the vertex set of G. The minimum degree refers to the number of edges incident with the vertex V. And as you can see in this diagram here, that W1 is degree one. So a vertex of degree one is called a leaf vertex or an end vertex or a pendant vertex. So graph theory in general, it is very crucial in analyzing networks as you have seen that it represents networks in different kinds. So if you are to take for instance here, the graph G1 here, say it represents sexual relationships. W1 here is sexually related to the husband H1. W2 is sexually related to the husband H2. Uh, I would want just to compare this with this graph H2, which is G2, I mean. So if you gonna take W1 here, you can see it's a leaf vertex. Uh, in terms of sexually transmitted diseases, if we assume that W1 and H1 are free from the STIs, they will remain free from STIs because they are not connected to N. So no one here is gathering diseases for another. So that's one advantage of becoming a leaf in this, in this diagram. Whereas if we are to go to B2, you can see that W1 is now a bit in trouble because there are chances that H1 can fetch diseases for her. So that's a, an example of a network. In networks, 
cliff vertex is quite cheap to establish. Say, for instance, you, have, you want to establish a seat and it's joined by only one road in the network. So to establish that seat, you only need to construct one road, whereas if it has got a number of roads, more than two, then it means it's becoming expensive to establish that. So that's one advantage of a leaf vertex. Uh, here we define some terms. Subgraph H is side that the vertex set of H is the subset of vertex set of G, and the H set is also a subset of the H set of G. The spanning subgraph is side that the vertex set of H is the same as the vertex set of G. So if you take this G1, you shall see that T1, T2, and C4, they are all subgraphs of G, and they are spanning sub subgraphs of G. The tree is a connected graph without cycles. So going back to that example, you see that T1 and T2 are trees. The leaf number is the maximum number of leaf vertices that is contained in a spanning tree of G. So if we are to go back to this, you can see that um, T1 has three leaves, T2 has two leaves. And all spanning trees of this graph, which you can construct, are isomorphic to T1 and T2. So the one with the maximum is T1. So it gives three leaves. So the leaf number of that graph, original graph G is three. So as we said before that the leaf number is linked to the concept of traceability and Hamiltonicity. We define a Hamiltonian graph to be a graph that contains a spanning cycle. And a trace, traceable graph to be a graph that contains a spanning path. So this graph G here, you can see that C4, it's a cycle containing all the vertices, so it's Hamiltonian. And so therefore it's also traceable. It follows that every Hamiltonian graph is a traceable graph. Here we define a dominating set. That is a set is dominating if every vertex in G is in S or is adjacent to a vertex in S. The minimum cardinality of the connected domination number is denoted by gamma C. So gamma C is the minimum cardinality. This relationship is a crucial relationship which we are to consider in this discussion. But LG is equal to the order of a graph minus the connected domination number. This, is, this implies that uh, whenever we are given lower bounds on the leaf number, we imply upper bounds on the connected domination number and vice versa. And also, if we are given lower bounds, I mean, upper bounds on the leaf number, they imply lower bounds on the connected domination number. I shall illustrate this as we go. Here we define a CN free graph to be a, a graph that is no cycle of length. So a C3 graph is a triangle free graph. So we shall be concerned about the triangle free graphs in the next section. A complete graph is a graph side that every vertex in it is adjacent to every other vertex distinct from it. The set S is an independent set if there are no pair of vertices in it that are adjacent. Generally, a bipartite graph is a graph that is two independent subsets, uh, which are such that every vertex in V1 is adjacent to a vertex in V2 and a vertex in V2 is adjacent to a vertex in V1. When we say it's now a complete bipartite graph, we are saying every vertex in V1 is adjacent to every vertex in V2. So automatically it follows that every vertex in V2 is also adjacent to every vertex in V1. Matching is a set of bridge joint edges. This is another crucial notation which we shall be using when you are given a subgraph H, uh, we denote by VG minus H all vertices of G which are not in H. So this is another crucial thing. 
Uh, here, I'll give you a brief background of the leaf number. It has been studied by several authors. The best of our knowledge, the determination of leaf number or the maximum number of leaf that is contained in a spanning tree was raised by lovers and sacks. And uh, this is known to be NP complete if you are to check a paper by Garay and Johnson. Uh, the study has been carried out by several authors. Here is a result of straw, which he stated without proof. And that result of straw has also been presented by several authors like Kletman and West, Linier and Studerman. Here is a result of Payan et al. The most interesting thing here we are looking at are pounds of lineal style. So conjecture one is the conjecture by lineal. As I said that the leaf number is related to the connected domination number. That conjecture can be written in that form in terms of the connected domination number. So the, this chapter here will give, will open a guide to further research in the field of a theory where we deal with the parameters leaf number and the connected domination number. So this conjecture has been solved for Delta at most five. You can see that is the result by Kletman and West and the result by Griggs and Wu. They provided an alternate proof for Delta equal to four. And they proved it for Delta equal to five with S constant C2. Delta equal to two. It's pointed out by Caro et al. For small values of delta at least six, the conjecture remains open because Alon disproved the conjecture for sufficiently large values of, of delta. So here we consider some classes of graphs that have been obtained to show that. Ug other than what delta minus two over n by delta plus one is sharp. So these are graphs constructed by Greeks and Wu, a necklace of beads. So you know a necklace is something that you put into the neck and it is what beads. Uh, I will illustrate with the diagrams these necklaces as we go. We have seen that uh, it has been shown that several classes of graphs attain the bound with the C delta equal to two. For C delta equal to eight over five proved by Greeks and Wu, it was difficult to find the other graphs that attain that bound with that best constant. So they came up with the graph, four regular graph of order six. So this four means four regular, this six means the order of the graph. And they mentioned that there are no other graph which they found to show that the, the bound is sharp. So yes, just an observation that we, we made in, in the paper in preparation. We have seen that this graph here by X and Wu can be generalized to a delta regular graph of order delta plus two, and it attains linear bound with the best constant delta plus four over delta plus one, which is less than two. So the study of leaf number has also been expanded to graphs with forbidden subgraphs. That one is one of the results by Griggs, Redman, and Shastri, where K4 minus E represents a complete graph K4 minus an edge. As I said, that we are mostly concentrating ourselves in triangle free graphs. Here is a result by Bonsma improved for triangle free graphs and later on we improved that for for delta at least four and delta at least five after that in the same paper we posted the following conjecture our concentration in this section is on this conjecture that here we need to pose a conjecture which is an improved bound compared to this one so from here, I'll be mentioning the reason why we are to establish a conjecture of such kind. What is in the bracket here is the corresponding 
account for the connected domination number. So it means you can state it in form of the connected domination number. Here's an observation that we made. From the graphs F2 and F3, from a paper by Mafuta and Mishanyu, written spanning path and cycles in triangle free graphs. We observed that we can generalize these families and form a class F23. This class of non-complete bipartite graphs, which is such that for every vertex in the largest bipartite set, it is of degree delta. This family has leaf number two delta plus P minus three and the constant C delta, which it attains this bound is four bracket delta plus P minus two over delta plus three. So we have re realized that this the bound in this conjecture is sharp in a way as shown by this class of graphs. So one good observation is that if you take P equal to one, for delta equal to three, four, and five, you get this constant for delta equal to three, this constant for delta equal to four, and a constant two for delta equal to five. So it corresponds with the already proved results. Here I will give you an example of such a graph F23 in F23. So you take a complete bipartite K delta plus one, delta plus P, you remove that matching and those edges, you obtain one such a graph. So here's an example. This is K55 for delta equal to four. And here is easy spanning tree with many leaves amongst all the spanning trees which you can construct from it. Uh, here I'm now putting the argument as to why we have to improve the bound, to pause and improve the bound. The family F23 attains this bound delta minus two over delta by N plus a constant C delta with the best constant C delta equal to this one. If you can compare this C, de C delta here and this one, you can see that this for P smaller than or equal to delta minus two is smaller than two, whereas this one for P smaller than or equal to five is smaller than or equal to four. So here C delta is decreasing. So we are mostly interested in making C delta as small as possible so that the balance becomes closer and closer to the coefficient of n. So the other reason we are to think of this bound as a conjecture is that we did not find a class of graphs attaining the, the bound in conjecture two, delta minus one over delta plus three by n, which does not satisfy this bound here. Apart from that, we obtained a family which is highly connected and is infinite for every delta. So that's motivated us to say, we pose conjecture number three, which is that conjecture there. So G is at least delta minus two over N over delta plus C delta. What is in bracket is the corresponding bound in terms of the connected domination number. Here I'll give you the class of graphs, which is highly connected. So you think of the family KG with the union of the VIs, where each VI is at least delta over two. But remember when constructing this year, we want to maintain the minimum degree to be delta. So when we do that, the minimum degree should always be delta. So each vertex in VI is adjacent to every vertex in VI plus one. And every vertex in VK is adjacent to every vertex in V0. That's the class of it. If you count, you get that N is equal to K plus one by delta over. I mean, the sum of this, which is at least K plus one by delta over. And if you calculate the leaf number, you get this expression here plus two, which is at least this. I'll show you with an example how we we calculate that leaf number. So what follows uh, is an expression that says, this class of graphs 
they attain the new bound with best constant C delta equal to two whenever the cardinality of VI is at least delta over two. So here's an example of the graph where K is 11 and delta is equal to six. Let's construct the graph, here we go. Here is the graph. So here I consider the case where every cardinality of VI is put over two for every I. So you can see that it's three nodes till the end. So from this graph, you can construct each spanning tree with many leaves amongst all the spanning trees which you can construct. It's a spanning tree. You can see that once we remove these edges here from the original graph, all these sets here remain with one vertex, which is not a leaf. Because once you remove that one vertex, it becomes disconnected. So that's why you see that we calculated our leaf number as being the sum of that V, cardinality of VI minus one, then plus a constant two. So you get that. If you check that, you will see that uh, the graphs attain the bound. What follows is just a mere observation that for delta even, the graphs are Newtonian. Here's an example of a spanning cycle when delta is six. And so therefore they are traceable. That's an example to show that they are traceable. So as you have seen, the graphs are infinite for each delta. And you know that in graph theory, it's always a voyage of discovery. You quest to establish the proof and you quest to provide infinite family of graphs that attain the bound. Here, we did not manage to prove the conjecture but here is the family and the conjecture. So this marks the, the end of the second section. Let's go to the next section, which is bounds on the radius set, minimum degree. The distance between two vectors is the length of the shortest path from U to V. The open neighborhood of V are those vectors which are distance one from V. And the corresponding closed neighborhood is the open neighborhood union, the vertex set V. The eccentricity of V is the distance from V to a vertex furthest from it. The maximum eccentricity is the diameter denoted by dam G, and the minimum eccentricity is the radius rad G. Um, this definition here, we derived it from a paper by Dangeman and Tringer, 2000. K pecking is said that the distance between U and V is at least K for all UV elements of K. So that is the notation we are to use that the closed neighborhood of a set S is the union of the closed neighborhood of set of vertex V for all V in S. Here is a, a bound that we proved in terms of radius and minimum degree. Uh, we managed to show that the first two bounds, this one and this one are sharp. But this one, we did not manage to show that it is sharp. But when we were constructing the proof, it seems like this can be turned into a two things of R plus half by delta minus two plus two. But we didn't manage to prove it. So we posted it there as a conjecture. So if the conjecture becomes true, it will be a nice thing that you see that is started with R minus half, then R, then R plus half. It will be a sort of some order there. So those are classes of graphs to show that those two bounds are sharp. So here I will give a, a brief proof of this one. It is important in summarizing some of the results in literature. If you are to look into a 
a paper by Edo Spag, Spag Polak and Tusa, the proof will simplify such results as well. So it shortens them, of course. Here I did not give the, the literature review on the radius because of time. So those are the graphs by Griggs and Wood show that the bounds are also sharp. This proof here goes like this. You take a maximum of two decades. Uh, a forest, which is a collection of trees, is constructed by taking VF to be a closed neighborhood of a set A. So it is known from the Dangeman and Tringer method that if you do that, the existing cardinality of A minus one edges, such that if you add them to the forest, you get a tree T prime, which is within distance one. This is known in literature that if you do that, the cardinality of A is at least one third the diameter of T prime plus one. But here is a good observation that we made that the diameter of T prime is congruent to modulo three. That helps us a lot to establish the proof. Moreover, the leaf number is given by the cardinality of delta minus two plus two. So with these observations, you can see that uh, as we mentioned up there, that every vertex outside T prime is within distance one of T. We can form a spanning tree T by joining each vertex outside one and only one of its neighbors, the, the tree tree prime. So this expression is known in literature that the diameter of a spanning tree is at least twice the radius of B minus one. And so therefore, from this, we deduce that the diameter of T prime is at least twice the radius minus three. This brings about the proof and we are done. So you can see that it also simplifies some of the proofs on the radius and diameter if you follow that pattern. We also used the same concept but however, together with the set theory, established bounds on the domination number. So you can have that one to establish some of the results in literature. Here now is the conjecture which I was talking about. Leaf number in terms of the radius and minimum degree. You can restate this conjecture in terms of the connected domination number. That whenever the connected Combination number is at most n minus two thirds r plus half by delta minus two plus two. Then for r congruent one modulo three, that conjecture is paused. We see that the conjecture is sharp as shown by the cycle C two r plus one of order two r plus one. The necklace of bees where each bead is k delta plus one minus an edge. Here, I will give you an example of a necklace of beads. So that you are seeing there is a bead K4 minus an edge. Now we want to form a necklace. So we add other beads and we join by edge. We add an edge there. We add an edge there. That's now a necklace you can put in your neck. That graph there. Um, so now we consider leaf number in terms of radius in triangle free graphs. These bounds we also proved using similar ideas, considering a matching, which is a distance at least three. So I will not put the proof as before. So this marks the end of the section. We go to leaf number traceability and Hamiltonicity. In literature, we know that uh, to the best of our knowledge, the first sufficient for a condition for a graph to be on Newtonian is due to Dirac. But however, there are several other results on Hamiltonicity. Here, we just pick which are important to what I want to illustrate. The importance of this section is to show how the bounds on the leaf number can be used to establish sufficient conditions for a graph to be either traceable or Hamiltonian. 
So in the same manner, we are showing how the bounds on the connected domination number can be used to establish sufficient condition for a graph in terms of the connected domination number and other graph parameters. So the first guy to introduce that is the concept of leaf number is Mukwembe who proved that result using uh, a result by Greeks and who. And we also used the same bounds on the leaf number to settle a conjecture by the computer program graphite.pc started by Glavin. In the same few project, we also proved a conjecture by Mukwembe using those bounds on the leaf number to establish this first bound here, which is saying Hamiltonian if here, which is at most two the order minus two. These bounds here are known to be sharp or best in a sense because this graph here is a non Hamiltonian graph of leaf number bigger than two delta minus two. And for each delta, this graph here is a non traceable graph of leaf number bigger than two delta minus one. So in the next section, we are to show how linear bounds of linear type can be used. Perhaps in the previously mentioned the results, the most difficult thing that we faced in establishing the result was to give upper bounds on the order. For the first result, n at most three delta minus two, and n at most three delta minus one for the other result. It was difficult and we used to prove by contradiction if you take the papers online. But however, here we observe something. Check that, for example, here we are just assuming that linear conjecture holds, for example, with the best constant C, to C delta equal to two. You would see that it becomes very easy to establish these upper bounds on the order because the lower bounds on the leaf number imply upper bounds on the order of a graph if it is given in terms of order and other parameters. So if you rearrange this term, you get n at most this one. So if you are to go back to a conjecture by Mkwembe, which says when LG is at most two delta minus two, we plug into this, you get n at most two delta plus two. So you can see that this, Upper bound n at most three delta minus two can easily be established if linear conjecture is proved. So in one line you can get you can get a solution rather than such long methods which we, we used in the paper. Uh, here we introduce to you the sequential join of a graph. In general, if you are given the graph G1, G2 up to GK, a sequential join is such that every vertex in GI is adjacent to a vertex in GI plus one. So borrowing such a definition, we defined a TKN joint K1 to be a graph obtained by taking three copies of a complete graph KN, then add one new vertex V say that V is joined to each and every vertices in the T component. So here yeah, I'll give you an example of a joint, that is 2K2 joint K1. If you write, want to write it in terms of sequential joints, it's K2 joint K1 joint K2, and the other part which is there. Uh, as an, an extension of a theorem by Dirac, we ought to establish sufficient conditions for a C4 free graph to be a Hamiltonian. Here we proved that uh, whenever delta is at least a quarter of n plus two, G is either Hamiltonian, G is the Peterson graph, or G is an element of those guys. 
from that, it brings to us new sufficient conditions for a graph to be Hamiltonian. Apart from that, we obtained uh, a good part of the Peterson graph, the Jupiter's Peterson graph, that whenever delta is at least three, the Peterson graph is the only non Hamiltonian graph that if the condition delta at least at least one quarter n plus two. And in that, we also managed to prove sufficient conditions for a triangle free graph to be Hamiltonian or traceable in terms of order and minimum degree. From the result on triangle free graphs, as an easy extension of Dirac's theorem, we managed to reduce this corollary here, which says if G is a graph with delta at least half the order plus one, then G is a Metonian, or G is an element of this family. The graph K delta, delta plus one plus H is described as this. It is formed by taking a complete bipartite graph, you remember us discussing the complete bipartite graph, and add S edges, the smallest partite set of K delta, delta plus one. For zero less or equal to S less or equal to half delta by delta minus one. The fraction half delta, delta minus one is coming from the effect that the edges of a complete graph be and are obtained like that. So after that, we proved on sufficient conditions for a graph to be traceable or I'm returning based on the leaf number of a graph. In that paper, we conjectured that whenever G is a graph with leaf number at most two delta minus one, then G is either Hamiltonian or G is an element of F2 or G is an element of delta, delta plus one. So this here is yet another conjecture which has remained open. And you can also state it in terms of the connected domination number. You can say, let G be a graph with the connected domination number greater than or equal to the order minus two delta plus one. Then either G contains a running cycle or G is an element of F2 or G is equal to the graph K delta delta plus one plus plus H. So as a conclusion, we have seen that highly connected graphs of linear style, highly connected graphs that attains a bound of linear style have been constructed and a conjecture was posed so if the conjecture is true, it is a sharp, a sharp bomb. Um, we also note that conjecture based on the radius of a graph and the minimum degree in terms of leaf number has been presented as well. And we, Conjecture opens a room for further research. In addition to that, three more open conjectures have been presented. And they are still for us to research further into aspects of bounds on the leaf number and the bounds on the connected domination number. So in a nutshell, it, it follows that 
the presentation here brings itself new two conjectures on the aspect of bounds on the connected domination number of a graph or on the leaf number of a graph. And apart from that, it presented three already existing conjectures in literature. And if these conjectures are to be established, they are all sharp and based in a sense. So this marks the end of my presentation. And I say thank you.